Okay guys, just a little follow-up. Actually, it's a bigger follow-up um, and a replacement video because I'm not sure how much noise this monitor is showing up on this camera because uh, I can't do direct capture of the screen right now. But uh, I've made some changes to the um, x-axis gantry. I mean, I've got the rails from the earlier prototype down there. But I wanted to redo this body in here, this part, um, because the last time looking at this. Do I need that tool open? No, I don't. Just close that. Um, I made it so this is all one piece now. Before, from the previous video, this underside part here had a separate, was separate, a separate plate that attached to the middle of this end point. A second here. So now the only separate part is the upper uh, bearing block or bushing sleeve, and I'm using. Um, let's see if I can get it here. I'm using the PLA uh, style uh, bushings for now. Uh, my testing so far is so they might work for a light uh, x, x axis. Um, the motor mount is still the same, that hasn't changed. I'm just going to put this back to a color. Um, Underneath, I'm going to uh, come up with a simple way of making use of these three holes to attach um, a part to connect this here, because this grabs the this grabs the top of the coupling nut, and then allows this slightly darker rod here that you can't uh, see threads on, because Tinkercad doesn't render threads very well at all. If you even find a threaded rod, it doesn't render the part very well. Um, but uh, this rod here would be threaded, and that's where the coupling nut would be. I've simplified the mount where it actually can attach to my, ex my existing stepper mount shape. And all these parts are either just at or just under the comfortable maximum of the printing size and volume of my uh, Fabricator Mini. So that should be pretty safe. I had to come up with a better way, you see the larger holes down here, to mount the um, I guess it would be the bearing housing or the bushing housing uh, because before there was no way to really attach it you, uh, with the aluminum rails and there was some collision in there and after thinking it out I've come up with a fairly complex shape I know it's rough to see it in here um, but there's a couple millimeters of uh, uh, PLA in different places where attached where the M3 screws will go through like in the, uh, the corners there. Um, and the motor mount, yeah, it's, it's stayed the same, and yes, the belt will go through here, but the neat thing is, the way I've made this part, the right-hand side, or the idler side, is exactly the same, it's exactly the same parts, just mirror-imaged, or, or essentially rotated. Um, I might mirror-image them, just so it makes it easier for the connection of the coupling nut. But on this end, the idler um, is basically going to be a little part that goes in with a couple bearings on the end of it to grab the end of the belt. And then uh, a slot, sorry, a little pin or set of pins will go into the slot here. And then there will be a nut on a washer on the end that you can tighten to draw, to draw that uh, out here for tension, keeping the tension adjustable. Now, I do have the, uh, the vertical rods in that inside the uh, area of the horizontal rods, which at first I thought was a waste of space, but I'm now finding is actually uh, a little bit uh, stronger structurally in the few softer ones that I printed at a low infill earlier tests, which actually have less plastic than this. They're quite strong. So my concerns will be making sure I've got the diameters correct for inserting the, uh, the uh, PLA style bearing. I have got one down there. If you can see, it's got uh, like a rifled inside. Uh, I can't remember where that part came from. I'll have to look it up, but it, uh, it comes from Thingiverse. There's all kinds of PLA bearings and nylon bearings, printable bearings, and I've tested these ones and they work pretty good. Previous version of this uh, video, I think I even held up a, a sample, a cross section of one that I printed on my printer in actual yellow PLA. Um, and it uh, was pretty good. I tested it on smooth steel rod. I'd actually be interested to try it on smooth aluminum rod 
or an anodized aluminum rod to see how that would go if it was smooth enough. Um, there's uh, Princess Auto here in Canada in my neck of the woods has uh, some various machining and fabrication supplies and one of the things they have a lot of is um, basic steel rod which is not very smooth at all. If you're lucky you'll find smooth rod but what they do have quite a bit an abundance of is smooth aluminum. Hopefully this video isn't shaking too bad here because I'm just using an improvised tripod. Well, that's a quick overview of the changes. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, post them below. And uh, don't forget to like if you like uh, projects like this. If you do thumbs down, uh, let me know why. And uh, again, uh, I'm just recording this here on somebody else's machine, so I don't have my usual setup. And I'm just using an improvised tripod, so it seems to be shaking a bit with the desk. So I apologize for that. And uh, I'll try and get some uh, capture software running on my uh, computer at home. One small note, there were some issues with Tinkercad this last week for me, and I've been working with uh, them there to get it fixed up. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Bye.